Hello everyone, and welcome to the Quantpedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today, we will speak about a primer on grid trading strategy. Hello everyone, my name is Radan Wojtko and CEO of Quantpedia. Today we will discuss a strategy that's called grid trading. Uh, grid trading is a very popular strategy among the retail traders. And we will try to analyze this strategy and to understand a little more why this strategy is working, uh, when this strategy is not working, how it is related to other trading strategies and what are the weak points of this strategy and uh, what we need to pay attention when you are trying to build a trading strategy or when you try to trade this strategy. We have two articles on Quantpedia that are related to grid trading strategies. The first one is the primer on grid trading strategy written in December 2021. Here we explain what the grid trading strategy is. So the basic idea of the strategy is uh, very simple. You need to repeatedly buy at the pre-specified price and then wait for the price to rise above that level and sell position. Or on the other hand, we are selling on the pre-specified prices and we are waiting and shorting and we are waiting for price to go down and cover. How does it work like in grid trading? Usually the trader set up the reference price by the note base ending closing price. We set up the grid. So the grid tells us which price references or which price levels we will buy and on which price levels we will cover. Or on the other hand, on which price we will short and then uh, cover. How does it look? So we have a reference price, so for example, today's closing price, limit by orders on uh, price levels that are below the reference price. And once the price, we can uh, imagine the blue wave, uh, it's like a synthetic price that we use in this example. So once the price of other line starts to go down, we start buying. So we are filled on the first limit order, second limit order, third limit order. So we buy and buy and buy. And we hope that the price will start to reverse. And once the price starts to reverse, we will be able to sell on the higher level. What does it mean is that the grid trading strategy is a reversal strategy. So it performs well when the price reverses out, but it's very, very bad strategy for trending market. It works same on the short side. So it means we have the limit orders for a short position, which are above reference price. And once the price starts going uh, above the reference price, we start opening shorting positions and we cover once the price revert and starts going again down. As you can see, as I mentioned, the strategy relies on the assumption that the price will oscillate during the day or during the week. So it means if the price went only down or up, we would not be able to close the position in profit. And at the end, we would eventually lose unlimited amount of the money. So it's a very, very risky strategy in case it's not performed well, because you can eventually lose a significant amount of money. There are additional parameters that are used in grid trading, like mean, stop losses, trigger price, uh, etc., etc. There is one very important thing that I would like to mention here. In a lot of the time, the grid trading uh, strategies are not reported on a mark-to-market basis. The performance of the strategy is reported only from the closed trades. And in this example, in this picture, I will show you why it's extremely dangerous. Usually the hedge funds or mutual funds or all of these solutions that are somehow regulated by central authorities or so by central banks or some uh, security exchange commissions or anything like that, they must report portfolio on mark-to-market basis. So it means even at the end of the day or end of the week or some predefined time period, funds must calculate what is the value of each underlying position in their fund and must report what is the actual value of the portfolio, let's say at the end of the day. Grid trading strategies sometimes do not do something like that. They report just the performance from the closed trades. So what does it mean is that instead of reporting positions every day and instead of showing what is the real volatility of grid trading strategy, which is the blue line, the grid trading systems or grid trading strategies very often report only the closed trades because you have a lot of the trade, you are buying on three different positions and you are waiting until the price goes up. And until the price is not going up, you are not showing what is the loss on that open position. Of course, when you start to buy in a grid trading, to buy, 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 and price going down, going down, and you have not closed the position and you will not report it, you can tell that you are not in a loss because you are still waiting for the trade to close. 
but you should be fair and you should report on a mark to market basis that all of the funds are reporting and you should show that you are in a great loss on the position and the volatility of the underlying strategy is, is high. That's very important for a grid trading strategy. It's very important to check whether that the grid trading strategy reports on a mark to market basis, at least at the end of the each day, or if it reports only for closed trades, because the closed trades they can hide significant drawdowns and significant losses of your portfolio. The grid trading strategy can have a positive performance in the case there is a sideways trend in the market, but in case there is a strong trend in the market, uh, your performance can be really bad, but the grid trading strategy will try to show you that you are still profit. That's a very dangerous thing and uh, I really advise you how the reporting looks like. Then we have a second article that it's interesting because it shows what is the relation between grid trading and delta hedging. Why it's interesting, it uh, shows that there is some merit in grid trading strategies because they are reversal in their nature, they are short volatility, even that they are sometimes very dangerous, uh, there is some underlying edge in these kinds of the strategies because they gain from selling the underlying volatility. And we will show how is the grid trading related to volatility selling and to delta hedging. Firstly, what is the delta hedging? So delta hedging is a trading strategy that aims to reduce the directional risk of short option strategy and reach a so-called delta neutral position. It's a similar to grid trading. So let's firstly explain our option selling or selling the volatility. So let's imagine that you are an option trader. Uh, we will sell one put option and one call option. We are short straddle. So that's the strategy called uh, short straddle. We receive the money in case our options uh, expire at the end of the period, plus or minus at the same price uh, at which we sold our option. Uh, so we will receive the premium from the options that we sold. So in our case, this short straddle position is a short volatility position. So what does it mean? It means that in this case, if the volatility is high and the strategy starts or uh, the underlying starts to trend, we will lose significant amount of money. So we will get into this red part of the chart. In case uh, so the stock price end up at the same price at which we sold our options, uh, we receive a premium. That's the short straddle. In the case of the short straddle, we can try to remove some of the risk of the movement of the underlying, underlying by performing the delta hedging. What does it mean is we sell short straddle, so we sell the short call and short put options. And once the underlying starts to move into one or another direction, we will start selling or buying underlying. Delta hedging uh, is a hedging strategy that tries to remove some risk out of the volatility shorting uh, option strategies. And delta hedging strategy is a long volatility strategy. So it means we are buying small fragments of the underlying in case the underlying goes up in price and we are selling short amount of the underlying in case the underlying goes down. Is the long volatility strategy similar to time series momentum or trend following strategies? Uh, so usually we uh, incur a small loss as usually we are buying at a little higher price than the selling, but overall loss from delta hedging is smaller than the premium that we receive from sold options. And therefore the delta hedging it increases the sharp ratio of short volatility strategies. So it protects against large directional moves when we are a volatility trader. Now, in the grid trading, we buy an asset when the price falls and sells when it rises. So what does it mean is that this strategy is basically the reverse to delta hedging. If an option trader sold a put option, they can apply a delta hedge. But on the other hand, if we are investor and we doesn't want to sell option, we can just apply a grid trading strategy. We will stand on the opposite side of Delta Hedger's trades. So we will buy the assets when the price is falling. So what does it mean is, to put it simply, an investor that holds a short straddle position is a short volatility. An investor who applies Delta Hedging trading without shorting option position is long volatility. So we profit when the price continues to move in one direction. We are hedging our short and lastly, when we are investor and we apply grid trading strategy in a similar position to the investor who holds the short straddle, but we are doing it without the need to use the options. So when we do the grid trading, we short volatility position, profit when the prices do not move strongly in one direction. So by performing grid trading, it's nearly the same as performing short volatility or short option strategies or volatility selling or option selling strategies. We are just not using the options, 
but we are trading the underlying. So we are buying and selling the underlying. What does it mean is that the grid trading has some underlying edge. Uh, we must be very cautious because we can lose a lot of the money. How we can build some grid trading strategies. So we analyzed futures on six currencies, including Australian dollar, British pound, Canadian dollar, euro, uh, Japanese yen and Swiss franc and as well 15 cross-currency pairs. We used data from 1999 until uh, November 21. The important is that we used futures and not uh, spot exchange rate because the price of the futures includes also interest rates. That's very important. Uh, now, we have countries with high interest rates such as Australia, which is usually a country that has a very high interest rates. And usually the Australian dollar tend to move significantly more uh, and trend more uh, than the countries with low interest rates such as Japan. Here we have a figure that shows the equity curves of all of the futures plus all 15 cross-currency pairs. Here we have uh, how the prices of the underlying can move uh, and now the question is which of these underlying are good for the trading strategies and which are not good ones. Uh, here in the last figure we can show the illustration of two synthetic cross-currency pairs. So in the first one we are long Australian dollar and short Japan and we can see that the price significantly drifts in one direction we are long currency with a uh, high interest rate and we are short the currency with low interest rate so we are receiving a significant amount of interest rate spread and in the second case we are long British pound and we are short Swiss franc in this case we are holding the cross currency pair of the countries with a similar interest rate uh, so it means that the underlying is significantly less volatile and is not trending into each direction so now try to imagine that we will try to use the grid trading strategy on one and also in the second currency pair. What will happen is that in the case of British pound and Swiss franc, our grid trading strategy would be relatively profitable. In the case of Australian dollar against the Japanese yen, we will lose all of the money. The reason why we lose all of the money in this case is because this pair start to trend in one location. And the trend will continue for several years and at the end we lose all of the money. How does it look like when we uh, apply retrading for all of the currency pairs and all of the cross currency pairs? As you can see, there are some currency pairs in which we lost all of the money. There are other currency pairs for which we earn some significant return. Now the question is what we can do with that? Can we identify some of the pairs that are better for grid trading? Yeah, we can do something like that or we can try to find the pairs that are better and we can do something with the grid trading strategy. So the first thing that we can try to do is that we can move the reference price. So in the, in the first case, we set the reference price at the beginning of the sample, so in 1991, and we didn't move the reference price. Of course, we can do something better, so we can move the reference price and we can change the reference value in the time. In this case, the grid trading strategy sets the reference price to the price from 250 days ago. Now, that's a very simple way how to do it, but uh, of course, there are better ways. Uh, I just want to show you what will happen. So if we move the reference price uh, every day, what will happen is that we can still perform on uh, uh, some of the pairs. The trending pairs are losing some money, but not such significant amount as uh, in the case that we were not moving the underlying reference price. So we improved some of the equity curves of the, some of the underlying pairs. What is the most important is that there are no pairs or cross-currency pairs in which we lost all of the money, so that's a good example. What is even better is to move the reference price and set up the monthly rested reference price. The idea behind this analysis is that because the delta hedging, oh sorry, the grid trading strategy is uh, inspired by uh, short volatility strategy, the short volatility strategy in case of uh, selling the options or short, uh, short option strategy, usually the options, the time decay in option prices is the highest in the last 30 days before the expiry. Usually when some traders sell their options, they sell options uh, with a very short time until the expiry because uh, that's exactly the time when the highest amount of the premium is lost. When you are selling options, you gain the trend. For us, it means that it's better to reset reference price on a short basis. So we set up the reference price on a monthly basis. So every month we set up the new reference price and we perform the grid trading strategy. As you can see, the grid trading significantly improved. We no longer have currency pairs that lose, I don't know, 80 or 70 or 60% of underlying. And we still have some interesting pairs that are a of money. The very easy way how to finish the analysis is to equally weight all of the pairs. And in this case, we have a diversified grid trading strategy on all of the underlying pairs. So we are selling a volatility. We perform the grid trading on all of the underlying 
pairs we receive the performance that's coming from volatility of the underlying pairs the resultant equity curve doesn't have a high performance but it has positive sharp ratio uh, of course we can leverage the strategy significantly if you want because trading based on currencies and in currencies there is possibility to obtain a significant amount of the level that's the result of our feed analysis of course we can improve the strategy by selecting the pairs that are best because they offer highest probability of mean reverting movements etc etc so there are other other ways how to improve the quick trading but i would like to finish video at this moment so i hope that you like these two articles in case you are interested links to those articles are in the description of this video i hope that you will join me in the next video thank you very much interested then pick another video to learn more or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.